let's do the two volume problems. Those would be, let me see, 10 and 11. So they're both volume, but they're done differently. 10, now here's x squared. Here's y equals zero. Here's x equals two. And we're rotating it around the x-axis and the x-axis is y equals zero. So this is our axis of rotation. Our radius is the distance from the axis of rotation to the curve. Our axis of rotation is y equals zero. The curve is y equals x squared. So the radius, we just subtract to find this distance, the bigger minus the smaller, the radius is x squared. So the volume is pi times the integral. I'll look for the limits of integration in a moment. Of the radius squared. Let's see. We're explicitly told that two is the right hand bound. We are not explicitly told this, but if you graph it, you can very quickly see that this region starts at to zero. And sorry, this is the radius squared. Pi times the integral from zero to two, x to the fourth dx. The antiderivative is one fifth x to the fifth. We plug in zero and two. Let's see, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two fifths times pi. And when we plug in zero, we get to zero, which we don't have to bother writing down. And there is our volume. Now, the other problem has a difference. We're rotating an entire region around the axis, first of all. And the region we are rotating is not connected to the axis. If you graph the line and the curve, you get this region up here. So when the region isn't connected to the curve, that's the washer method. 
you've got an inner radius and an outer radius. And this is y equals zero. The distance from y equals zero to y equals x squared plus one is x squared plus one. And the distance from y equals zero to y equals negative x x plus three is negative x plus three. So you've got an inner radius and an outer radius. And we need limits of integration. Let me take care of that later. For now, let me write what we have. The outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared with pi out front. This region begins and ends at a point of intersection. So you could do this algebraically, or you could use your calculator's intersect feature. I'm all for using technology. But since I can't show you if I work on the calculator, let's go ahead and do this algebraically. Our limits are negative two, positive one. And now, We've done the kind of interesting work. Now we just have to clean this up. We'll need to foil both of these, and then we'll take the antiderivatives and stick these numbers in and subtract. So negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Let's see, negative 3x, another negative 3x plus 9 minus x squared squared is x to the fourth. We've got an x squared and an x squared, a 2x squared. This whole thing is being subtracted. So negative 2x squared. 1 times 1, this whole thing is being subtracted, though. So negative 1. And where are we at? We've got a negative x to the fourth. We don't have any x cubed terms. We've got these x squared terms giving us negative x squared. We've got negative 6x. 9 minus 1. Eight, and now it's all over but the shouting. Admittedly, the shouting in this case 
is pretty tedious. We have to go to our calculator and plug in one and negative two and subtract what we get. And what we get is either 117 over five or 23.4. Depending on whether you prefer decimals or fractions. Alternatively, I wouldn't mind if you multiplied that out and rounded to oh, three or four decimal places.